Welcome back to the Deep Dive. Uh, if you've been keeping an eye on space news lately, you absolutely know the big story. It's all about this, well, frankly baffling object, 3 i Atlas. It's definitely capture everyone's attention. An interstellar comet doing unexpected things. <sighs> exactly. I mean, it's not just in the astronomy journals, right? It's everywhere online. Yeah. You see these wild claims. Yeah alien tech, rocket boosters, you name it. It's got scientists scrambling. Mm -hmm. So we've gathered up the sources you sent over the NASA tracking data, the different scientific models that seem to be uh, disagreeing, and yeah, even some of that online speculation. Right. And today, our mission really is to cut through all that noise. We want to pull out the actual facts, the verifiable science, and focus on the two big puzzles that make 3 i Atlas such a fascinating Oh, cosmic detective case. That's a good way to put it, because, you know, when you look closely, 3 i Atlas isn't just acting weirdly. It's genuinely challenging our standard prediction tools. Mm. We're looking at something that wasn't made by the same rule book as comets in our own solar system. An outsider. Precisely. Yeah. And the two main anomalies we need to unpack are really tied to that interstellar origin. First, there's that uh, unexpected brightness surge. It just flared up way more than expected, suggesting its composition is pretty different. Okay. And second, that really strange visual, the reports of its tail seemingly pointing towards the sun, <laughs> which, you know, sounds completely backward to how most people think comets work. Right. That's the one that really grabbed the headlines. Yeah. Okay, let's get into it. Starting with that brightness puzzle. Yeah. Perihelion, its closest pass to the sun, is coming up, right? October 30th, 2025. Correct. And normally we expect comets to brighten gradually as they get closer, as the ice heats up and turns to gas sublimation. But this one, it just surged. The data we're getting now shows this really sharp increase in brightness, like way ahead of schedule. Yeah, and understanding why that difference matters is key. Our predictive models, you mentioned the sources, cite the Comisile model, which is a big one for predicting brightness, mm. and the JPL small body database, the SBDB, which is like the master catalog. These are built on decades of data from our solar system's comets. Okay, so they're based on what we usually see here. Exactly. They're heavily tuned for activity driven mostly by water ice, H2O. Water needs to get pretty close to the sun before it really starts sublimating rapidly, creating that bright coma and tail. Right. But the data for 3i Atlas, as the sources confirm, isn't just diverging slightly, it's diverging dramatically and much further out from the sun than these water-based models predict. So if our models expect water and 3i Atlas is brightening up way out there, mm -hmm. What does that imply about what it's made of? Why are our models failing here? Well, it strongly suggests 3i Atlas isn't primarily fueled by water ice. Instead, it's likely rich in what we call super volatiles. Think things like frozen carbon monoxide, CO, or maybe nitrogen ice, N2, stuff that turns into gas at incredibly cold temperatures much further from the sun. Oh, okay, so it doesn't need as much heat to get going. Precisely. If it's packed with these hypervolatile ices, they'd start turning to gas much, much further out. That sudden, early, intense release of gas and dust outgassing would perfectly explain the uh, unexpected brightness surge we're observing. And NASA looked into this. Yes. The 2025 NASA study mentioned in the sources points directly at this. It concludes the divergence is likely due to this intense outgassing of volatiles, or potentially some other physical process we don't fully understand yet, but one that's consistent with objects formed way out in interstellar space. It's really pushing our understanding of, like, galactic chemistry. Okay, so the brightness mystery points to unusual chemistry. It's still, you know, natural chemistry. Right. But then there's the second issue, the one that really sounds like science fiction, the backward tail. When people hear a comet tail pointing at the sun, it just sounds wrong. It violates basic physics or, like you said, maybe hints at propulsion. It does sound impossible at first glance because, yeah, the basic physics is pretty clear solar wind and radiation pressure push comet stuff away from the sun. Always. That classic image of a comet with its tail streaming behind it as it moves, that's generally correct. So how do we explain this one? Well, thankfully, there's a neat scientific explanation. It's not actually pointing at the sun physically. It's an illusion caused by something called an anti-tail. An anti-tail. Okay, no. that sounds slightly less dramatic than alien engines, I guess. How does that work? Is the dust actually moving backward? No, not at all. It's purely down to geometry, our specific line of sight from Earth. See, comets generally have two tails. 
There's the gas or ion tail, super light, gets pushed straight back by the solar wind, easy. Okay. Then there's the dust tail. This stuff is made of heavier particles. Solar radiation pushes it too, but because the particles are heavier, they don't accelerate away as fast. They sort of lag behind the comet nucleus, following its orbital path, but falling back along it. Like leaving a trail of breadcrumbs along the curve it's following. Kind of, yeah. Imagine this stream of heavier dust particles curving along the comet's orbit. Now, sometimes Earth passes through the same plane as the comet's orbit. Right. And if we hit just the right angle, we end up looking at that trailing sheet of dust almost edge on. Ah, uh, I think I see. When that happens, from our perspective, the part of the dust sheet that's lagging behind the nucleus appears to project forward, like a spike pointing generally toward the sun. It's just perspective. The dust is still moving away from the sun overall, but the lagging part looks like it's ahead from our viewpoint. So it's like looking down the edge of a curved piece of paper. Exactly. That's a great analogy. And the sources, like that 2025 Wikipedia update, explicitly state this observation is totally consistent with a natural anti-tail. It solves the physics puzzle without needing anything exotic. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Uh -huh. So we've got two really weird observations. Mm -hmm. The brightness surge from super cold ices and this anti-tail illusion. Both strange, but both explainable with um, natural physics. Correct. Unusual, but natural. But, yeah, you put those two together, right? The unexpected brightness and the weird-looking tail. That's like rocket fuel for speculation. We've all seen the posts, online fusion drives, alien course corrections, that kind of thing. These weird observations definitely fed into that hype. Oh, absolutely. When something defies easy explanation, people jump to exciting conclusions. So let's do the reality check. What's the actual hard evidence say about these artificial propulsion ideas? Is there anything there? Well, the rigorous scientific check says there's nothing there. Those claims are essentially baseless from an evidence perspective. It's not just that the evidence is weak, it's actively missing. Missing how? What would scientists look for? Okay, so one key tool is spectroscopy. That's where you break down the light coming from the object to see what chemicals it's made of or what chemicals are in its coma. If there was some kind of engine firing a rocket, any kind of propulsion, we expect to see specific chemical signatures in the light. Like exhaust fumes. Exactly. Things like specific metal oxides, maybe complex hydrocarbons, stuff you get from burning artificial fuel. We look for those spectral lines. And for 3i Atlas, they're just not there. Absent. Okay. No chemical signs of engines. What about its movement? Wouldn't an engine make it move differently? Precisely. We'd also look for propulsion signatures in its trajectory. An artificial engine doesn't just release chemicals, it provides thrust. It causes a non-gravitational acceleration, a push that isn't explained by natural forces like outgassing. And 3i Atlas does show some non-gravitational effects, right, from the outgassing. Yes, it does. That outgassing acts like tiny natural jets pushing the comet slightly. But and this is crucial. NASA's detailed tracking data shows that these effects and the way its brightness is changing are completely consistent with what we see from other natural interstellar objects. Ah, so it fits a pattern. It fits the pattern. The sources specifically draw a line between 3 Ayadelas and Umumua, remember Umumua, that first interstellar object we detected. It also showed weird non-gravitational acceleration that baffled everyone initially. Yeah, I remember the speculation around that one too. Right. But the consensus now is that it was likely due to outgassing, probably of volatiles we couldn't directly detect. 3 Alice is showing similar behavior, very active, maybe pushed slightly by its own gas release, but ultimately acting like a natural body from interstellar space. Okay, so let's pull this all together. What this deep dive seems to show is, yes, 3 Alice is scientifically weird. It's making us rethink our comet models because its brightness surge, likely fueled by super volatile ices, is way off the charts for what we expect based on our solar system. Definitely challenging the models. And its backward tail. That's a known, though rare, natural optical illusion. An anti-tail caused by our viewing angle. Nothing physically backward about it. Just geometry. And critically, despite the hype, there's zero evidence, no spectral signatures, no weird acceleration patterns pointing to artificial engines. Its behavior, weird as it is, lines up with other natural interstellar visitors like Umamua. Exactly. It's anomalous, scientifically interesting, requires new explanations within physics, but those explanations appear to be entirely natural. So it's strange, but it's nature's kind of strange. Precisely. And that actually leads to... Um, Maybe the most interesting takeaway, a final thought to chew on. 
If we accept that both 3i Teles and Umumua, these visitors from outside our solar system, showed this kind of unexpected high activity needing explanations involving significant outgassing or other non-gravitational effects. Right, if this is becoming a pattern. What does this pattern tell us about interstellar objects in general? The sources hint at this. Maybe the relatively quiet, water-ice dominated comets we're used to in our solar system are actually the exception, not the rule. You mean our comets are the weird ones? Possibly. If this kind of behavior, intense early activity, super volatile composition turns out to be the norm for objects wandering between the stars, it means interstellar space might be populated by bodies that are inherently much more active and volatile than we typically assumed based on our local neighborhood. Perhaps the most exotic things out there aren't artificial, but just the common natural baseline of the galaxy.